Your AI co-pilot just shut down the main line right in the middle of a rush job because it couldn't see the schedule. Context matters and the model context protocol is how we give it. I'm Zach with 4.0 Solutions. Quick shout out, today's video is sponsored by MaintenX. Bring unplanned equipment downtime down to zero. Prevent costly production disruptions with the industry's most intuitive, intelligent, mobile first maintenance and asset management software. We'll dive deeper into how MaintainX pairs with MCP in a little bit. Stick with me and you'll learn where MCP came from, how the host, client, server pieces together, and how it powers real plant workflows. We'll finish with one architecture step you absolutely must nail first to get the most out of MCP. Section one, origin story, why now? In late 2024, Anthropic drafted MCP so the language models could call external tools safely. Microsoft slid it into Copilot Studio, GitHub wired it into Actions, and open source IDEs like Windsurf jumped on board. Big players wanted one universal connector, not a jungle of plugins and patchwork integration. Section two, what is MCP? MCP is an open JSON protocol that lets any agent, GPT-40, Claude, even a local Llama, discover and call external tools without custom defining the APIs themselves. So one language with any source can understand the context for that protocol. Definitions are cool, but diagrams make it a little bit easier to understand. Let's jump over on the whiteboard. So at the very top here, you see the MCP host. This could be a chat window, an IDE copilot, or either MES or your SCADA. Inside this host lives your MCP client. This little box is the one that actually speaks MCP JSON for the host. The client itself sends a single structured request straight down using the MCP protocol, which you can think of as HTTP for agents. Standard verbs, standard schema. The protocol routes this call down to an MCP server, which is our universal adapter. From within this server, we can route out to our native endpoints, whether that's a SQL database, an API, a REST API, OPC UA, or file system, et cetera. So this is the best way to get your, your chat bot to interface with the data that's down here using MCP. That's why this is so important. The takeaway, the host speaks MCP once, the servers speak native dialects, and you can swap out servers in or out without rewriting the host. The section four, machine health walkthrough. This is an example of how you can use model context protocol to understand your machine health. So step one, show me every machine in plant A. The client discovers the list of the machines on the asset server, and the server returns the ID, name, status, and OEE for the host to display the table. Step two, the LLM filters for status equals to fault or where the OEE is below 80%. For example, it identifies CNC number seven and then it takes that CNC seven and calls get machine details and passes in CNC seven as a parameter. The server returns the live vibration, the temperature and the last five downtime events. Step three, the vibration has exceeded the limits, and so the client fires a create work order on the MaintainX server. The work order ID comes back and a team alert goes out. Using model context protocol, a large language model can go from discovery to diagnosis to action all within one query using separate MCP steps with zero glue in between. That's the real game changer. Before we scale up, here's more on MaintainX, the platform built to bring unplanned downtime down to zero. MaintainX centralizes every procedure, work order photo, meter reading, all in one mobile app. So your team prevents outages before they happen and sails through audits with confidence. MaintainX already has an MCP server adapter, so your AI agents can automatically create, update, and close work orders without writing any custom code. Hit the link below to start your free trial and see why thousands of plants trust MaintainX and get started today. And thank you to MaintainX for sponsoring this video. Back to the tutorial. Section five, predictive maintenance industrial scenario. Our agent runs 24 seven, subscribing to pump 12 vibration. Using that information, it's pulling the bill of materials from the ERP whenever anomaly appears and calculates the mean time to failure. Orders of parts via purchasing API, all through MCP servers with zero new glue. Industrial scenario two, energy optimization. At 2 p.m., your power rates start to spike. An agent checking the pricing reads real-time load from SCADA and reschedules non-critical washdowns to off-peak 
where the price is lower and reschedules non-critical procedures to off-peak times where the cost of the electricity is a lot lower and alerts your supervisors in real time. Using this one model context protocol, you can execute tasks that go across many different domains. So why does MCP matter? Today, you face a problem. N to the power of M, nightmare. Every model talking to every API and the number of connections are squared. MCP collapses that mess into N plus M. So think of it as the USB-C connector for AI. One plug, any source. A unified namespace warning. So while your model context protocol helps you move data and retrieve APIs, it doesn't organize it. If your planned data is still siloed, your agent stays blind. Building a unified namespace helps define your plant context, so that way model context protocol can be layered on top of and act as the shim between your AI chat interface and your unified namespace for your plant industrial data. Order matters. Here's a quick lightning round for MCP. So can MCP reach on-premise PLCs? Absolutely. Using an OPC UA server, you could connect to equipment on the edge and write process control variables to a PLC using model context protocol. Is it secure? Authentication and roles live within the server, so absolutely you can lock it down. Vendor lock-in? None to speak of with model context protocol. Any JSON speaking model can drive MCP. So that's MCP. Origin, architecture, a machine health workflow, and how the unified namespace helps empower it. <laughs> that step you don't want to skip. Next week, we're going to talk about industrial AI agents and how you can use them with the unified namespace, particularly with MCP. If that sounds interesting, make sure to subscribe and drop your questions below, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.